While Indigenous populations in Canada have higher risks of health problems, our usual treatments often focus solely on Western medical approaches. Experts say that cultural strategies proposed by Indigenous leaders that address the multifaceted problems are effective but regularly ignored. While cultural approaches are not a replacement for medicine, working with communities to incorporate cultural strategies may be beneficial. John McGavick, a professor of health sciences at the University of Manitoba, says that scientific evidence shows what Indigenous leaders have known for years. Culture is healing. He says that understanding the connection between wellness and culture should help shape policy in order to get to the root of some health disparities in Indigenous communities. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, they are generally three to five times higher in Indigenous communities uh, relative to non-Indigenous communities. If we take a look at other things like mental health conditions, it's the same. Um, However, there's a, a broad distribution. One of the key elements here is we often just say Indigenous, and, I mean, and we think every Indigenous person in Canada, uh, but there are pockets where things are really, really bad, and then pockets where things are really, really good. He says that there are differences between the Western and Indigenous concepts of health. If we take a look at how we're educated, it's usually a very linear education with regards to health, and it's a causal and reductionist approach. So this thing is related to that thing. So if you smoke, you're going to develop lung cancer, or if you eat these kind of foods, you're more likely to develop diabetes. Um, However, the indigenous approach is far more holistic, where instead of looking at one element, it's the combination of elements working together that incorporate health. Uh, So within a medicine wheel, for example, there are spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional components of a person's life that would bring their whole health together. The way in which health problems are treated are therefore inherently tied to culture. In the indigenous model, a cultural activity like going to a powwow or doing a dance or maybe even being out on the land doing some hunting and fishing might have elements of spiritual, emotional, physical and mental health that would all lead to an indigenous concept that we might call Mino Bamadzwin or living in a good way. I think an indigenous model would be Let's take a look at reconnecting individuals with cultural activities to see if we can improve the entire person as a whole. The efficacy of culture as medicine has been shown in cross-sectional studies of Indigenous communities. The rates of youth suicide were 150, 140 times higher in those that had very little cultural continuity compared to those that were very highly connected to their culture. Similar results were shown in a randomized controlled trial that compared cultural education to a Western approach for diabetes prevention. Compared to the action group, which was the group that got standard information about how to be more active and how to eat healthier, the group that got the cultural intervention gained less weight and their blood sugar levels didn't change over the 6 months or the 12 months. In contrast, the group that was in the education group, they saw a rise in their body weight and they saw a rise in their blood sugar. So in this case, the culture outperformed um, the Western approach. And so that is a very powerful example of how culture can promote health for Indigenous people. Professor McGavick says that scientists must cooperate with Indigenous leaders and respect communities in order to move forward. What a lot of Indigenous communities would like us to do is come in there with an open mind, an open heart, and open ears to say, what are, what are your challenges and how can we work together to overcome them? And they're really focusing on trying to find community-level interventions that have been co-developed between researchers and community members that are going to take culturally relevant, community-relevant ideas and try to bring them into health. Dr. Christopher Musquash is a clinical psychologist and professor at Lakehead University. He says that this understanding addresses a troubled history. There's a long history of, of colonial um, intervention and, and assimilation policy. You know, this has been thoroughly documented and, and described elsewhere, but you know, understood as residential school, uh, child welfare, that, that really disrupted communities and, and disrupted um, cultural traditions. And, and it's really led to a lot of the disparity that you're seeing now in terms of Ultimately, recognizing this relationship between health and culture can affect new policies that will improve health inequality. These understandings that come from Indigenous peoples that wellness comes from a place of culture are now, you know, part of federal policy. Indeed, you know, I think that we're in a very, very exciting and interesting time in which we're beginning to see the implementation of a lot of these things in our in our communities, and we're we'll see, you know, the beneficial effects of these things as well. So there's this growth and 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 continued hunger by by many. 
culture-based approaches to, to health. But this is not to say that Western medicine and Indigenous medicine should be at odds. It's not always one or the other, or it's not always in conjunction. It's just a, a, you know, a, a blend. And I think the importance comes in, in, in trying to ensure that policy reflects uh, the needs of, of communities in, in that people should have an option in terms of, of what it is they wish to pursue in terms of their own culture-based healing practices. He says that being immersed in culture provides a sense of belonging, purpose, hope, and meaning, which are important for a holistic view of health. You know, embedded within our, our culture-based healing modalities are, are these things that, that, you know, Indigenous traditional knowledge tells us are, are really, really important in terms of, you know, fostering one wellness and, and, and one's health. For Evidence Network, this is Dane Wanyarachige.